This week, I am continuing my list of healthy habits to ensure optimal health and longevity. If you haven't watched the first one, I will link it in the description box and let's get started. Number six, meditate, pray, do affirmations, visualize, whatever your spiritual practice is, engage in it and if you haven't found it yet try to find it it is my observation that people that do spiritual practice whatever it may be generally feel more content with life and do better when it comes to overall health and longevity and it makes sense obviously i'm talking only in the context of health there's a lot more to talk about when it comes to religious practices and spirituality this is just a narrow focus on health and what you are accomplishing when you are making a conscious choice to be disciplined, to sacrifice pleasure for some remote goal, you are learning to delay gratification. And healthy habits, diet, exercise is nothing else than teaching yourself to delay gratification for some further removed goal in the future. One other aspect of having a spiritual practice is that there is the separation between your spiritual self and your physical body and you start perceiving your physical body as a temple, a vehicle, something that you are responsible for maintaining and looking after. And so making healthy choices, establishing healthy habits, it becomes kind of obvious and not challenging at all. And again, this aspect of delaying gratification, engaging in strenuous exercise, Exercises, giving up on your cravings because you are maintaining your body which is your temple becomes a lot easier once you have that understanding so if you'd like to engage in some spiritual practice but you don't know where to start I would recommend a Wim Hof breathing it is relatively easy quick and people report seeing results quite quickly so you will notice impact on your spiritual and physical body relatively fast uh, you can even get his app where he does the timing of how you're supposed to breathe and hold your breath um, and it's really easy to do. Wim Hof discovered this uh, method by himself uh, while walking around and taking cold plunges but it is an ancient uh, practice also known somewhere there in Tibet. As for myself, I've been practicing Zen Buddhist meditation since I was 18 years old. Obviously, on and off, there were some periods of my life that were more turbulent and there was a time when I was studying full-time and working full-time, I literally had no time. But eventually, I always go back to that basic Zen meditation, sitting in the Zen, and I aim to I meditate um, for as many uh, minutes as my age and so with every year you're supposed to add a minute to your meditation time. I also practice various um, breathing techniques, Wim Hof breathing method is one of them, but I also am trained in hypnosis. Uh, hypnosis was part of my certification when I was getting neuro-linguistic programming certification, so I have background in hypnosis as well and I use those techniques to work through some trauma or through some problems in my bodies. Uh, one of the techniques I use is known as rebirthing or connected uh, breathing. And number seven, have your health goals defined. I know it sounds obvious, but have you thought what healthy means to you? What your golden years should look like? How you want it to be? What investment in your health do you need to make today so that your elderly years, you are still strong and healthy and full of life? And when you are working on your goals, there's one thing to keep in mind. One thing are your goals, which should be crystal clear. The other steps are the processes, how you get there, what your system for reaching your goal is. And this, this part is where you need to be flexible because there will be a lot of things that will get in your way and you will have to adjust your strategy. And this is not going to be a problem as long as your goals are clearly defined. Next one up is a good night's sleep. There have been books 
focus groups, studies conducted on the importance of sleep and what it takes to have a good night's sleep and yet we don't pay enough attention to it, especially in our younger years. It is almost a burden to commit to seven to eight hours of sleep a night. I know I was there myself. I mean, sleep was the first thing to sacrifice to study or to party or to do whatever else but sleeping. Unfortunately, there is no making up for lost sleep and you'll end up paying later with interest, speaking as a banker. To have a good night's sleep, you should have a healthy evening routine and healthy sleeping habits. That means you should be going to bed at the same time and waking up at the same time, including the weekends. You should be sleeping in complete darkness with temperatures that are around 70 or slightly below. Turn off all your electronics and don't eat any high carb meals right before sleep. And also related to a good night's sleep is next one up, sensible sun exposure. Don't avoid sun. A sensible sun exposure will also help you have a good night's sleep. And that's because in the morning, the blue light from the sun will stimulate your pineal gland to shut down melatonin production and increase other hormones that will keep you awake and alert. And the red sun setting will help your brain to calm down, relax and start producing melatonin and to fall asleep. So when you leave your home in the morning, don't put any sunblocks on you and don't wear sunglasses. You need your eyes and your skin to get that contrast, that radiation to start appropriate chemical processes in your body. And depending on your skin complexion and your geographical location, you might have to take anywhere from 20 minutes to three hours of sun a day to have adequate exposure to the sun so that you can produce vitamin D3. Now, here in New York area, the best uh, time to get exposed to the sun is between 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. And that is the UVB radiation. That is the same radiation that will give you sunburn, but that is also the same radiation that stimulates your skin to produce vitamin D3. So you have to pay attention how much your body can comfortably tolerate. Now, the use of sunblocks comes handy only when you cannot get off the sun in time or you are engaged in sports or in work that you have no choice but you will be exposed to the sun past what's appropriate for you but other than that there is no need for using of sunblocks in fact if you can you should avoid them and number 11 i think i might have lost the count but i am quite certain it is altogether 12 tips um, and this one is walk barefoot whenever you can as often as you can now ideally you walk on the beach that is the best but not many of us have access to the beach year-round those of us that do are super lucky now the next best thing is to walk barefoot on the grass here in the city Actually, I have a park that I can go to and I can sit on the grass. So what I do during spring, uh, summer and fall, I'll get my lunch and uh, walk through the park barefoot and sit on the grass and eat my lunch. And this way I accomplished three things. I get to eat, I sit in the sun and I am barefoot. The point of walking barefoot on the grass or on the beach is to do the so-called grounding, the process of exchanging positive uh, electrons from your body with negatively charged electrons from the earth that is very calming to our nervous systems, has antioxidant effect on our uh, body and the list goes on. There is a whole book uh, written uh, about, about it called Grounding and I actually do have a video because to uh, alleviate the problems of not being near the beach I got a mattress that is actually grounding and a mat that is also grounding and it, the, it came with the book I have a video about it I will link it in the description box you can check it out and last but definitely not least eat red meat make it a foundation of your diet now, I know I don't have to convince my carnivore and carnivore-ish uh, viewers, but for everyone else, 
Do not underestimate the role of red meat in your diet. It will make you strong, it will give you the best amino acids profile, and it will make you healthy for many years to come. It does provide health and longevity. And this one's for the ladies. As we age, we have a tendency to developing osteoporosis, which is the decreased density in our bones. Now, let me just remind you, our bones are basically mineralized proteins. 40% of the bone is actually a protein. It is important that we eat red meat because it is the best protein type, the best amino acids that our body can utilize as a building block tofu or chicken or any other bean proteins does not come close. They shouldn't be even put in the same categories as proteins. Red meat is the best for strength and longevity. All right, so this concludes my 12 lifestyle tips that will ensure good health and longevity. If you think of something else I could implement to my life, I'm looking for some feedback, let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't yet, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you in my Friday findings. Bye.